Well, hello everyone. Good afternoon. This is Christine Diaz from the BITES Board of Directors. BITES stands for Black Youth in Technology, Engineering and Science. Today we have the pleasure of introducing an amazing partner, which is uh, Shift Help. They've reached out to us and said they've got a great program. They have some great initiatives happening in the community and they are willing to partner with us to work with our students to uh, look at the opportunities that are available in life sciences. That's a very exciting opportunity. Um, we have a number of students who've registered and uh, we're just uh, gonna kick things off because we know that they're on their way. Um, but I'd like to pass it on to our lead here, which is Megan. Megan Wright, uh, did you wanna take the floor and introduce your organization and what we're gonna do today? Sure, so I think Michelle is going to share her screen and flash up um, a presentation that we put together for today's information session. So um, it's a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to um, uh, tell some high school students about what we do at Shift Health and then also tell students about an internship program that we've developed um, at our company, which is um, a part-time sort of job shadowing opportunity. So we'll um, talk generally about um, the life sciences, consulting in the life sciences, um, um, about our firm. We'll talk about our own career journeys, what, what brought us to Shift Health. Um, and then we'll give an overview of, of the summer internship. And then um, if there's any questions from Christine or our participants, we can spend some time there. Um, we'll also provide you with contact information in case you want to get in touch at, at a later date. So um, on the call today, there's myself. I've, I've been um, at Shift Health since 2019. I'm joined by my colleagues Kevin, um, Mame and Michelle, who I'll be speaking in a bit. They're all part of the consulting team um, and joined Oh, look at us, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 22. <laughs> um, consultants through, through the ages. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass it off to Mame now um, to lead us through a bit of a um, group brainstorming activity. Um, <clears throat> I think that the consulting team um, can jump in to sort of demonstrate how um, we might come together to think about a problem um, this isn't just a sample problem, but um, something similar to what we'd be doing in our everyday consulting work. So, Mommy, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, thank you, Megan. Um, and I think Megan um, summarized it pretty well. Um, we just wanted to provide you with a little snippet or feel um, in terms of what type of um, scenario or problem um, we might be um, faced with in our everyday work um, in consulting. Um, so I'm just going to um, read this off the slide here, um, and then um, I think it would be nice, uh, Kayla, if you're comfortable, if you just wanted to chime in, we just want to hear your thoughts um, in terms of any considerations or information uh, that you think we would need to come up with. Um, and you can either raise your hand and answer if you're comfortable um, or just send something in the chat. Um, so the City of Toronto is concerned about the mental health impact of COVID-19 lockdowns on GTA youth. You've been asked to help design a community initiative focused on researching this critical issue and proposing solutions. What information would you need to design an effective program? Um, so I'm going to stop here um, if anyone on the call has any questions or any 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 um, clarifying um, comments um, and then I'll just give us some time to think before we jump into the brainstorm. Uh, thanks, Mommy. I, I can start. Um, and again, we're just kind of brainstorming here. So maybe the first thing that comes to mind is we should identify who the GTA youth are that we want to learn more about. So maybe the first step is doing a little bit of uh, research and, and looking online to see if we can find some uh, representative GTA youth groups in our communities that we could target. Um, and then maybe we reach out 
with we reach out to them with with an email um maybe asking for a meeting with uh, their leads or, or something like that that could be a good first step that's a really good um point kevin and i think along with that also maybe also digging deeper to further understand what type of concerns um, these youth have in regards to mental health. So identifying those areas um, or issues they may be facing um, just to be able to kind of narrow in what that solution um, might look like. Megan, I see your hand up. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like the idea of um, understanding the problem better. And, and I agree that um, perhaps interviewing some of these youths um, about the mental health challenges or just impact generally they've been experiencing, what the details are there. Um, I can imagine we'd also want to start to look at other community-based initiatives that have um, similar mandates. Maybe we can look outside of Toronto um, to find something happening in another city that, that's similar um, and take inspiration from there. Um, or maybe there's some community-based initiatives here in Toronto that have a different focus, but, um, but we could still learn about um, sort of um uh factors around how best to to design it based on what's been successful for them for um getting uh participants from the community and getting um financial support more general aspects of of implementing a community-based initiative I really like that idea, Megan. And um, I think like something else that we should also consider too is maybe asking the city of Toronto in terms of any constraints they may have on the initiative itself or what they have envisioned or if there's anything financially we need to consider um, just so then we can make sure that our solution is something that is feasible for them and can be implemented. I'd like to maybe contribute a little bit. So is some of the things that you might be considering, would it be around um, some existing programs and to see how people have reacted to those programs, whether or not they've um, been in involved? Because I know mental health, uh, you know, maybe a few years ago, wasn't really important. People didn't, it had a bad stigma. So people didn't necessarily register for something in regards to mental health um, and they probably didn't see the importance of it. So I would look at the existing program, see, you know, what's been taking place, what were some of the reactions and then, and then kind of see how you can augment some of those programs um, and get feedback from people that are in those programs as well. I think that might be useful. I'm curious to know if, if Kayla has any comments. Not to put you on the spot, Kayla. If you're speaking, you're on mute. Okay, maybe she's shy. That's okay. We can move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, no problem. Um, Kayla, if anything comes to mind and you want to just shoot it in the chat, please feel free um, to do so. Um, so yeah, those were all really, really great ideas. Um, and just getting, um, just touching on the point um, that you made, Christine, um, definitely um, that process of speaking to exist people in existing initiatives is something that we do. Um, usually we call that benchmarking. So looking at some existing programs or initiatives, um, looking at how it was done and also the impact coming out of there. Um, so maybe looking at several and then kind of going in and picking pieces um, or speaking to people to know what would work best um, for, for us um, in terms of our specific project. Um, so moving on to the next slide, we had 
a few, and I think we've touched on that. Um, I think Kevin was getting to the first point about community demographics, so really understanding the people that you're working with um, as people, different people have different needs, especially when it comes to something like mental health. Um, and understanding your demographic obviously will allow you to come up to a sol uh, with a solution um, that is more aligned specifically to their needs. Um, and again, um, I think I touched on this, understanding their mental health priorities and concerns, um, reading the question generally, um, it might take some more digging to really get to the root of the problem. So doing that to ensure that you're really just addressing the problem at hand. And of course, um, existing outreach initiatives. So that benchmarking, um, really understanding what's been done before, what worked um, and what didn't. Um, and also looking at potential partners, um, their strengths and assets. So I guess alongside with the benchmarking, thinking about where you might be able to pull in support, whether that is a community, an organization, um, stuff like that. Um, and then uh, best practices and youth outreach. So along with maybe a benchmarking, we tend to do something called an environmental scan. Um, so really doing that research, again, to kind of look at some of the best practices um, when it comes to uh, putting together an initiative um, like this. So yeah, some, some great ideas there. Um, and again, uh, Kayla, if you have any questions um, or any ideas uh, come to mind as we're going on, just please feel free uh, to put that in the chat. I'm going to now pass it to Michelle <laughs> um, to walk us through what consulting uh, looks like. Thank you, Mommy. That was a great warm up. Um, so I'm going to introduce a little bit about our life sciences sector. Uh, and really discuss how management consulting and life sciences can fit into the sector. And then I'll introduce a bit about Shift Health, our own company, before we dive into our own career journeys. Um, so Canada's life sciences sector, it's a very diverse and thriving sector. It encompasses biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and digital health. And it's all really committed to enhancing human health and well-being. So just some quick facts about the sector. Um, it is made up of over 8,000 companies with almost over 200,000 employees and over 50,000 students. The federal government itself has invested quite a lot into the sector, uh, recently $2.2 billion towards it. And as many of you may know, the sector is home to multinational pharma companies, so with some familiar names, I'm sure, such as Pfizer and Sanofi. And in the sector, there are quite a lot of emerging technologies. Uh, some of them including cell and gene therapy, radio pharmaceuticals, and vaccines. So if you're interested in the life sciences, of course, there's a number of different careers outside of our general idea of doctors and nurses. So I'd just like to kind of bring those up um, and to kind of provide some ideas on different types of careers. So they're usually categorized into three different um, sections, I guess, of the career of the sector. We have research and development, business and commercial, and clinical and technical. So if you're interested in doing research and development, certain roles you might see would include a research scientist or a pharmacologist or a biochemist. And these are typically the people who will be doing the research, the drug discovery to help come up with new pharmaceuticals, new medications, new vaccines, and so on. You can move into business and commercial. So here you might be familiar with pharmaceutical sales reps or maybe someone who does regulatory affairs and they're regulatory affairs specialists. And so of course, these are ones who are going out to either get people to start using their drugs or they're seeking approval from Health Canada to make sure that their drugs are safe and can be sold and used by Canadians. And then finally, the final category here is cl clinical and technical. So here, um, kind of like I gave the example of doctors and nurses, but of course in the clinic, we also have other roles such as medical laboratory technologists. So they're the ones who actually work with clinical samples. They're helping with diagnosing certain infections um, or certain types of diseases. So that's really cool. Um, there's also other roles like radiology technologists or quality control analysts that can also be considered in terms of technical aspects. But there's definitely a very broad, it's a very broad sector and there's definitely a lot of different types of careers. So where do we fit in as management consulting? So as a consultant, we help our client organizations solve strategic and operational challenges. We identify and seize new opportunities and to also help design and implement new initiatives by answering some important questions. So clients may be asking, what are they good at? What areas do they need to improve? What are some markets that they should be in? What are the products or services that they should be offering? Uh, what are the competitors doing? What do their clients need or want? And also, where do they need to improve to grow? So we help our clients answer these questions, and we work with a large a range of different players in the life sciences sector. And they include academia, so these would be universities, research institutes, uh, government, so like ministries of health, 
uh, both at the federal level, provincial governments. Uh, we also work with non-for-profit organizations. So these could be health and research foundations, charities, uh, you probably recognize like WHO, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Of course, we also work with the private sector. So these would include pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, um, the patients as well. We do work with patients and patient advocacy groups, as well as care providers. So these would be the hospitals, doctors, nurses, patient support programs. So when we work with these clients, what are we actually doing? What is a day in our life like? What is a project like? Well, we offer our clients ad advisory support. So we're helping them answer those questions that they're asking on the previous slide. And we take them through this process of research, analysis, strategy development, and implementation. And so to give you an idea, an example project could be a university approaches our firm and they have a question of developing a new research center. And they're thinking about you know, going in the field of cancer research, but they're not sure what to really focus on or how they should be building out this research center. So as a consultant, we're here to help them answer those questions. So we're gonna first take on research. And here we're gonna do primary research, which would include the consultations or interviews where we'll speak with experts in the field. So this university wants to do cancer research. So perhaps we'll speak to experts or any like doctors that are within the university that are familiar with the field to see what is trending, where is the research going. We'll do secondary research. So this here would be looking at documents, uh, reading publications, trying to figure out, you know, what are some of the key priorities that the rest of the world are interested in right now in that field. And then we'll also do benchmarking, as Mommy has explained, where we'll be looking at similar institutions or centers and seeing what they're doing and kind of following their practices and using it to help model our center so that it can also be set up for success. After we do all this research, we collect all this information, we move on to the next step, which is analysis. So here we're looking and actually thinking about how all this information is giving us basically ideas about trends or priorities and how it could be applicable to our client. So in our scenario, again, where we're building this research center, perhaps we're seeing that a lot of priorities or a lot of government funding is now going into personalized healthcare or personalized medicine. So perhaps that's something that the center should focus on, cancer research and personalized medicine, looking at certain mutations, for example, in certain types of cancers. So once we discover these kind of trends, we do this analysis, we move on to a strategy development. So here we develop a framework um, for that strategy, where we outline the type of goals, the objectives, the mission of basically this research center that we're trying to build, what the client's trying to achieve. And then we also highlight certain uh, priorities that they'll be going for, and then outlining what kind of targets and impacts that they're aiming to achieve. Once we develop this strategy, the final step is to go into implementation. So here we help our client realize that. So that strategy is now moving from paper into reality. And so how we can do that would be, for example, helping with a proposal, perhaps helping them get funding or um, maybe a certain process to get people on board so that we can actually start and develop um, this strategy into um, something that's feasible and tangible. So this is kind of this is the typical process that we go through in a project when we're providing um, support to our clients. And if you're to do an internship at Shift Health, you'll be undergoing a very similar process. You'll be doing research, you'll be doing analysis, you'll be developing a strategy. The only thing you will be doing is the implementation part, but you will be presenting your solution recommendation to us. So you'll be also you'll also be able to develop some presentation skills there, which will be really good and transferable. So taking that process, um, I'm going to bring it back to the life science sector and seeing that all the different players, academia, government, not for profit and so on. I'm going to provide some examples of what we can do as consultants to help these different players in the life science sector. So for example, in academia, we, like I mentioned, we help develop strategies, proposals for research, funding, and institutional infrastructure. We also help them assess opportunities for research investments. Uh, for government, we will help them develop strategies for economic growth, and this could be through looking at new investments, maybe in new innovations, or finding ways to develop more jobs in the life sciences sector. For not-for-profit organizations, we could be looking to help provide access to research and innovation leaders, so bringing them together um, into collaboration, or providing insights into research activities and innovations and developing strategies and proposals for funding support. In the private sector, um, things that we offer those clients would be to provide insights into research activities, innovative solutions within a field of interest, or even more interesting, in competitors. 
Uh, we also assess investment opportunities or sometimes develop clinical and commercial strategies for certain products. And we also provide access to researchers and leaders in the field as well. Kind of expand the knowledge there. Now for patients and public, uh, we do connect the public with research and innovation efforts. And we also provide knowledge and insights in research and innovation that can provide more benefits to patients. And finally, with care providers such as hospitals, we help provide access to collaborations with innovators, researchers, expertise, pharmaceutical companies, for example. And we also help develop strategies that can improve the implementation of clinical trials. So this is not limited to how we can help. It's just some kind of giving you guys a flavor, a taste of what it is that we do, and some examples of certain projects that are often coming up when we're working as a life science consultant. So now if you're hearing about life science consulting now in the life science sector, you may be wondering, is consulting right for you? Is this something that you would be interested in? So right now here on the slide, we have a couple of statements. On the left-hand side, we're uh, kind of outlining statements where it may show that you would excel in consulting or it might excite you to be in consulting. Uh, whereas on the right, these might be some statements where, you know, consulting might be a more stressful environment for you and you won't and you might not enjoy it as much. So, of course, these statements are not as simple as just, you know, you have to match all of them. Again, I think the best experience for you is to actually do a bit of consulting, see what it's like, get that exposure. But we can go through this exercise very quickly um, just to give you an idea. So imagine yourself um, and see how you resonate with these statements, and then you can decide if consulting is something you would want to pursue. So you can think about, do you love a challenge um, of solving complex problems that I cannot tackle alone. Would you be excited by the idea of advising people who know much more than you? Do you prefer to seek out direction when needed and you drive ideas forward? Do you enjoy working in a high pressure, fast paced environment and would you respond well to change? Also, would you enjoy searching for a bigger picture and looking outside the box and even in the absence of perfect information? And finally, would you consider yourself to be a risk taker? So those are kind of some of the statements that we think you may be a prospective consultant if you resonate it with. Um, so take that back, think about it a bit, and uh, consider if consulting is something that you'd be interested in. All right, so now that we've kind of gone over um, a general overview of um, consulting, we're going to focus a bit more now, bring it back to Shift Health, and we'll introduce what our company does. So at Shift Health, we bring a science mindset to strategy consulting for the health research and innovation ecosystem for the life sciences sector. We blend scientific depth, sector leadership, and global perspective, and we tackle our clients' most challenging questions with curiosity, rigor, and courage. So we are rigorous. We approach our questions with discipline and clarity, and we generate meaningful evidence-based insights for our clients that they can trust. We're creative in our solutions. Our clients are very unique and we design innovative approaches and original solutions that reflect our clients' specific goals, questions, and contexts. And we're also collaborative. We invite our clients to view us as peers. Often we're an extension of the client team, and so we're committed to achieving a shared vision of success. And our main goal here at Shift Health is to really help deliver sharp insights and customized solutions so that we are helping to create the future of healthcare. So here are a number of our service offerings from Shift Health. Um, you'll see that there is some correlation to the different clients that we've been working with, um, all the different players I mentioned earlier about the life sciences sector. So we do a lot of strategy work. Uh, we do do corporate strategy. So you can imagine that's something that the private sector might be interested in. We do research strategy. So that would be academia probably or the government. Uh, product strategy, policy strategy, partnership strategy. We also do opportunity assessment, as well as program evaluation, proposals, and pitches. So it's a wide range of different service offerings, and it's very exciting because every project is always different, and uh, we're always learning something new. Okay, so this here is just to kind of provide a quick glimpse at our sector expertise, some of the clients that we work with. So we are focused on serving the health research and innovation ecosystem, and we've worked with leaders from the government, academia, industry, not-for-profits, care providers, on a number of different complex strategic initiatives. And these are really to have, meant to move ideas, knowledge, and technologies from the concept to impact so that we can better create a greater future of healthcare. 
So you can see, um, I'm sure some of you recognize some of these logos. We've got the government here, like the Public Health a Agency of Canada, not-for-profits, like the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, industry, a number of large pharmaceutical companies, um, academia, a number of different universities around, um, around here in the GTA actually, but also looking internationally as well and around Canada. And then we also work with a bunch of different hospitals and clinics that are also in and outside of Canada as well. So at Shift Health, we have a great track record. We have over 20 years of supporting health research and innovation globally. We have over 300 clients across the health system, health ecosystem. And we've also helped raise over $2 billion to support health research and development efforts. We've also successfully implemented over 50 research and development partnerships. And so that is a little bit about Shift Health. So I think we are going to move into discussing our career journeys. Um, just kind of let you guys know how um, we've kind of gotten from high school to where we are now at Shift Health. So I'll kick us off since I am already speaking. <laughs> I hope you guys aren't tired of my voice already. So my career journey started in Brampton. I was born and raised in Brampton. Um, and I was always interested in science, um, I guess specifically life sciences. And I think high school is what really helped me determine that. Uh, it was great getting to look at biology, chemistry, and physics separately. Physics was really not my thing, so biology and chemistry it was. Um, and in high school here, I played table tennis. That was one of my hobbies, and I competed at the provincial level, so that was really fun. Um, I was also in drama classes, and I was in a high school musical. Uh, I then went to undergrad at McMaster. Uh, I first started there in the life science program, and then in second year, we're supposed to specialize. So I went into biochemistry. And so here, um, I was part of the Biochemistry and Biomedical Sciences um, Society, which is great to meet peers with similar interests and to see where they want to go with their careers. Um, at Mac, it was really nice. We got a lot of exposure to research, so I actually ended up doing a um, fourth year thesis in a cancer and stem cell lab. And that was really where I was interested in cancer research and oncology. So I spent most of my life in my, like the latter half of my undergrad in this building. And I also did my master's there um, in this really nice building here called the MDCL. And I'm just like in the lab constantly, but really um, interesting to focus my research on leukemia and stem cells and basically how these stem cells are contributing to the development of cancer and how we can stop that. Um, so I did my master's in the HOPE lab and um, I got a chance to publish. So I had a great and fantastic research experience, which then pushed me towards a PhD. I wanted to continue that research. I wanted to continue being in science. So I moved to the University of Toronto and here I was enrolled in the laboratory medicine and pathobiology program. It's a mouthful. Um, and I was mostly at SickKids. And here I was in Dr. Michael Taylor's lab. And similarly looking in oncology, but I changed my field from leukemia to pediatric brain cancer. So here I was looking at something called mesoblastoma. And I was studying how the cancer cells spread from the brain to the spinal cord. And when it does, how can we stop it to prevent it from happening? Um, so again, very great experience. I learned a lot, but here was also when I learned that I didn't want to do research. I still loved sciences, but I wanted to explore outside of just research and academia. So I looked around and I got involved with quite a lot of different consulting groups. Um, I worked with 180 Degrees Consulting, University Consulting Group, and also the Graduate Management Consulting Association. And with them, I got a lot of exposure to consulting. I got to participate in certain projects. And that is kind of how I got here. Um, when I was getting ready to graduate, I knew I wanted to do consulting. So I applied to Shift Health and yeah, it's been a great year so far. And I'm gonna pass it over to Megan. Before, before you pass it on, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. that was great um, information, uh, especially someone at your age to be exposed to all of these different projects. That's amazing. I wanted to see if any of our students had a question for Michelle before we move on. You can put it in the chat if you're shy and don't want to come on camera. Anybody? Okay. Well, I think we are ready to move on. If you do have a question later on, please feel free to add it to the chat. So, Megan, you're up. Thanks, Christine. 
And thank you, Michelle, for that great overview of uh, life sciences consulting and shift health. Um, so me, um, major nerd in high school. Um, I yeah, was not as um, active in different co-curriculars um, as Michelle. I went to engineering camp um, at U of T called, it's called school. And that is where I learned about biomedical engineering for the first time. Um, we learned about how you can apply engineering principles to things like prosthetic limbs, um, uh, artificial hearts. And then what really interested me was um, applying things like chemistry and biology to engineer actual human tissue. That's called tissue engineering. Um, with that in mind, I went into a program at McMaster University, which is a engineering and biosciences degree. And I studied chemical engineering with um, that mix of biomedical engineering, focusing mostly on, on how to engineer tissues, um, learning how to use chemistry to build the materials that human cells can grow on um, and and other sort of related related concepts. Um, it was a thrill to do an engineering degree. Um, what I'm showing in, in that picture there is my my hand in the middle with my newly minted um, engineering ring. It's called the iron ring for those who haven't seen this before. All the Canadian engineers get it when they graduate from their program. Um, and then on my right is my dad's hand with his engineering ring and the left is my grandpa's hand with his engineering ring. So I was a, a third generation engineer and both of them were at my, my ring ceremony. It was a really cool experience. Um, from there, I, I moved back to Toronto. Um, I lo really love this city and, and University of Toronto is, of course, a great school. And there I pursued my graduate degree, also in biomedical engineering, um, focusing on tissue engineering. And I was doing tissue engineering of gum tissue, actually. So anyone who um, has receding gums, if you go to the the dentist and they tell you that your gums aren't doing well because you're not flossing. Um, I was looking into a strategy for how to make gum tissue so you could replace the, the gum tissue that um, is receding because of gum disease. And in that picture there, I'm, I'm presenting um, the results of some of my uh, my studies, my expert, my research um, on a poster at a at a poster fair, um, and then on the on the far right there, um, it's just a scan of a pamphlet um, advertising the lab space that I was doing my research in, um, and I just got pulled into a a photo shoot just walking by the lab. Um, one day with my, that's my supervisor, my PhD supervisor and my um, really good friend and lab mate in the background and me doing some, um, some stuff on the, on the lab bench. Um, in terms of how I ended up at Shift Health, like Michelle, I knew I didn't want to continue in research. I um, actually even going into to graduate school, I knew I'd move into industry into the business world. And so I needed to find something that could combine my love of research with um, with business so that I could learn about business strategy and build up my, my skills there. And I discovered Shift Health, which um, allowed me to do exactly that, to apply my love of science and research in particular, um, while also learning um, um, how to strategize with a business um, skill set, a business mindset. Um, and I've been so thrilled to learn about science outside of tissue engineering um, and really stretch my sort of um, research skills and, and curiosity um, to areas of the life sciences outside of tissue engineering. And yeah, happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Yeah, that that was amazing. That's awesome. Um, I I I was stuck on the uh, the gum 
the gum tissue. Oh, I'd love to hear more about that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I don't know if any of the students have a question they wanted to ask or want to put something in the chat. No? Okay. We will move on. Thank you so much, Megan. And who is next? Ask me. <laughs> so okay. mommy's career journey. Um, so similar to Megan, I started my career journey right here um, in Toronto. Um, so I went to high school um, in North York um, and I would it well, as well would say that that's where my love for science really took off. Um, but for me, right off the bat, I was definitely more drawn to biological sciences, so bio, psych, that kind of stuff. Um, but at that time, I found the physical sciences interesting enough to, to do them. <laughs> um, um, so um, I would say that I was also very, I was very involved um, in high school um, in terms of extracurriculars. Um, this picture on the screen here, I um, was part of this community initiative um, along with Mothers Against uh, Drunk Driving. Um, so going through our community just to talk to people about the dangers of uh, drunk driving, um, sharing people's stories with others. Um, I was involved with uh, Big Brother, Big Sister. Um, community involvement was really huge for me. It was something that I was very passionate about. Um, but going back to my love for science, um, so thinking about the biological sciences, that's what really ultimately led me to pursue um, an honors life sciences degree at McMaster. So I went ahead um, and went to Hamilton. Um, I think during this time would be when I became even less interested in the physical sciences. I remember really hating chemistry <laughs> and physics. Um, but um, interestingly enough, being um, Realizing that I was enjoying more bio, psych, um, English as well, <laughs> funny enough. Um, so I ended up not specializing um, just because in undergrad, I was still really figuring out what I liked. Um, I think I definitely came from a background in a home where like science was kind of pushed down my throat a little bit. So it was undergrad was still a way of me figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, so I did complete my uh, degree in honors life sciences, um, but finished with a minor in psychology and English. Um, and then following that, um, I went on to complete my graduate degree in health sciences at the University of Toronto. Um, so more specifically, I was in their translational research program. Um, and this is a two year program, which was course based first year, accompanied by a second year thesis or capstone project. Um, and essentially the main focus of this pro uh, pro program was really learning how to translate those basic science um, observations, whether it's from the lab, um, the clinic or community into interventions that would improve the health um, of individuals and the public. Um, so basically taking things a step further from that basic science research and thinking about how you can apply it in the real world. So during my time in the program, I did my capstone at Camp CAMH, so specifically at their bridging clinic, um, which offered drop in mental health services. Um, and unfortunately, because of the uh, drop in structure, um, it meant that patients often experience really long wait times, which then led many of them to be dissatisfied with their experience um, at the clinic. Um, so my capstone really aimed to reduce wait times by addressing some of those inefficiencies faced by the clinicians within the clinic and to further work with patients um, to improve their satisfaction with the care that um, they received. Um, and funny enough, looking back, I think this program really prepared me for a consulting role. Um, I remember basically living in <laughs> um, their bridging clinic. I remember being able to shadow physicians, doing consultations with physicians and patients, um, really getting down to the nitty gritty of what their needs were, what their expectations were, and how we could work with everyone in that um, setting to kind of make sure that everyone was getting that um, good experience. So I think immediately after that program, I was like, okay, I like talking to people. I like that I have a science background, but how do I make real impact? Um, so I remember finishing my master's degree and being really confused. Um, I knew I definitely didn't want to go into academia. I knew I didn't belong in the lab. Um, so it was a lot of, you know, coffee chats um, and talking to people. And it was finally my supervisor um, that was on my capsule and that was like, have you considered consulting? Um, and I was like, 
what is that? Um, especially again, I don't think it's a field that's talked about enough, but especially in my background and my culture, you're either a doctor or lawyer, you do your PhD, that's really it. And that's all we ever talked about. Um, so really then that's when I heard about it, um, going to different consulting sites, setting up coffee chats, really talking to people. Um, and luckily I had a friend who had gone to McMaster that had done an internship at Shift Health. So I gave her a call and I spoke to her and I'm like, what was your experience like? What is your day to day activities like? Like, um, and I think right off the bat, I was like, oh, my God, I feel like I've been doing a lot of this already through my program. Um, so then I went on, I applied for an internship, I believe, uh, during the my final year of my master's. So as I was wrapping up. Um, I applied to an internship and luckily landed it. Um, so I was also able to come on as an intern and also feel out whether the role was for me. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I learned so much. Um, and for me, um, I found it very rewarding um, just because I got to use my scientific background in a more hands-on way um, and addressing um, problems in the life sciences or health sector, um, but more importantly, to get to see some of the immediate impacts or benefits of my solutions or the stuff that we were working on, um, which is really what drew me to the profession. Um, and then luckily, after my internship, uh, Shift Health decided to keep me on, which was amazing. Um, and I've been here with my internship included two years now, um, and I'm having a great time. <laughs> and I feel very fulfilled and um, I'm glad definitely with the path that I chose. So yeah, happy to answer any questions. <laughs> that's that's awesome, ma'am. Um, I don't know, are there any questions? I thought that was very interesting, especially the comment that I think it was said earlier about when we think about health, when we think about science, we always think about the only career choices you have are as a doctor, right, in, in the medical. And, and sometimes that's just, sometimes people are just not interested in being a doctor, so they just kind of don't even look any further. So uh, I think everyone that's spoken so far has opened our, our eyes and, and, and opened our minds towards the fact that there's so many career choices and that your career choice that each one of you have experienced, you've provided in an impact into the community. So I think that's phenomenal. Um, that's great. So if there's no questions, we'll move on to the next speaker. Thanks, Christine. Uh, all right, Kevin. Uh, <clears throat> so funny seeing these old pictures. Um, so I guess the, the main difference between myself and the our three speakers is that I did not go to Hamilton. I've never lived in Hamilton and I've never gone to McMaster. <laughs> but luckily I was still hired at Shift Health. And the way that I got there is I did high school in, in Winnipeg, where I grew up. I went to the school called Grand Park. We were the Pirates. And that's a picture of me uh, in my convocation cap and gown. Um, like Megan, I was a bit of a nerd in high school. Uh, I played a lot of sports, actually. I, I played a lot of Frisbee. Mainly that was the main sport that I played. Um, but I did the whole like AP bio and chem and I was really into the sciences. I had a great high school chemistry teacher. And I think I owe a lot of my interest in the sciences to, to him. I stayed in, and I'm just keeping an eye on the time, so I'm going to go through this a little bit more quickly than my peers. Uh, after high school, I stayed in, in Winnipeg, and I went to the uh, University of Manitoba, where I did an undergraduate degree in chemistry. I focused on environmental and inorganic chemistry. Uh, that was a lot of fun. The school is was great, very cold. There's a picture on the top left there. You can see some snow that seems to kind of last all year. And the bottom picture is me uh, when I was a rock climbing uh, camp instructor. So although I was studying during the year, during the summer, I needed to work to make money to pay for school. And the job that I had up until the very end of my undergraduate degree was actually I was a camp counselor uh, on campus and I taught rock climbing to little kids. And that was awesome. It was really fun to balance kind of like my scholarly activities with um, with just having fun. It was a really fun summer job. Uh, and the top right picture is me in the lab. So this is kind of later in my degree. There was a photographer that was taking pictures for new for new um, university materials. And 
Um, that's actually the cover of the undergraduate calendar for the whole university, uh, perhaps my crowning achievement of my undergraduate degree. But it was enough to get me to Toronto, where I, I currently live. I did my PhD in chemistry, um, a little bit different than than uh, the speakers before me, but it was more of a physical science degree, not so much life science. Um, but it was great. I loved it. I probably learned um, more in those five years than the rest of my life. It was uh, a ton of fun. Research was great. But like my colleagues, I wanted to see what else was out there. Um, and one of the things that I, I chose to include on the slide is, again, on the, the theme of, of fun, you can have a lot of fun while you're studying sciences. There's, there's maybe this stigma that people that like science maybe don't have a lot of fun, but you can have a lot of fun while, while you study science. I think all of us uh, have had this. And that's also depicted on the bottom picture under uh, U of T. We did this Halloween pumpkin carving thing in the Department of Chemistry and our pumpkin won. We had this glow in the dark reaction in the middle of the pumpkin. That was a lot of fun. So in the interest of time, I'll stop there, see if there's any questions from anybody before providing you with some details about the internship. I don't see any questions in the chat, but uh, um, any students that are on the call, uh, you know that you can follow up with our email if you do have questions later. OK, you can move ahead, Kevin. Thanks, Christine. Michelle, can you go to the next slide, please? Over whoever is sharing their screen. Is it, is it not sharing? I should be on slide 22 right now. No, still on 20. Hmm. Maybe you let could try resharing. Yeah, let me just quickly reshare that. Thank you. Great. OK, so bringing everything that you've heard together, uh, Shift Health is now, it, we're very pleased to offer a summer internship program that's really designed to introduce students that have an interest in sciences, life sciences specifically, or, or broader as well, to our world of management consulting. What you uh, what we'll do together is you'll get some training by attending in office, uh, in person office sessions. Uh, you'll shadow us as we do our day to day jobs, and you'll work on a team based case study. The internship is in person. It's going to happen uh, during the month of August, every Thursday from nine to five p.m. It's four weeks, and it's a paid internship of six hundred dollars. Uh, so the internship is a really great opportunity uh, in high school to grow your career, but also to learn new skills and meet new people. Uh, it's really going to help with your career growth by seeing how a management consulting firm works and specifically like we heard today about alternative career paths in the life sciences. It's also going to help you with your career development, with interview skills, research, strategic problem thinking, but also writing and working in a professional environment, which are very valuable skills as well. And you'll get to grow your network by meeting the great team members at Shift Health. Four of us, four of us are here, but there's many more behind the scenes. So who are we looking for? We're looking for two creative and curious collaborative grade 11 or grade 12 students, black students, uh, or recent grads of a GTA school. You should be currently taking a STEM course, uh, and considering uh, a life science program at a post-secondary uh, institution. Um, and it'd be great if you're passionate about applying research and innovation to make the world a better place. Some dates uh, that are important to know. So today you've learned about our firm and the internship. So we encourage you to take the month to think about whether this internship is a good fit for you and work towards uh, May 31st application uh, submission deadline. And we'll ask you to submit a cover letter and a resume to the email that's shown on the slide. Uh, we will be conducting interviews based on those applications in mid-June. There'll be uh, virtual individual interviews, and we'll ask you a few questions about your previous experiences and your interests. Uh, we'll take July to decide, and then the internship starts August 1st. Uh, like I said, it's going to be in person every Thursday from 9 to 5, and we'll have a bunch of activities for you to do every Thursday that you come in. So just in time, but I'll pass it back to Megan and or Christine for some closing comments. 
make it Thanks, did everyone. you want to go ahead no I, nothing else to share i'll leave it to you christine um okay to I'll wrap us up yeah to wrap us up well thank you very much shift help this was a great opportunity uh, I'm just very excited about what you have as far as this internship, um, hearing about your different career paths. I felt like this event was very personal. So I think that's great. It's nice to hear your personal stories and what really drove you to, to this career path. Um, again, very excited for you to, to be here and to present to the Bytes Network. This session has been recorded, as you know. Um, there's a number of students that signed up. Unfortunately, they did not, some of them were not able to make it. We have some great students that are here. So to the students who are here, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Um, I will be sending a copy of this recording so that you can actually, if you could put the name of the um the website, I think we have your website information. It's already in the invite, but uh, we'll be sending a, a information package to you so that if you are interested in registering for this internship, you'll have all the information that you need. OK, so again, thank you very much to everybody that participated. Um, Kayla and Zara, thank you for joining. Um, Kevin, Mim, um, uh, Megan. And uh, Michelle, thank you very much. Hopefully I've got everybody's name here, but thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.